Hi, welcome to the Power Sport Institute. My name is Andy Parks, this is Jared Goins, and we're here at the Maco store on campus getting ready to shoot a tech tip video, and I need to get some tools. So the first part of our tech tip for today is making sure we have the correct chain slack. We don't want it too tight, it's going to bind the counter shaft bearing, wear out the chain prematurely, premature wear on the chain and sprockets, and we definitely don't want it too loose because we don't want to run the risk that the chain could derail from the sprockets. So the service manual specification for chain slack is so that when the counter shaft sprocket, the swing arm pivot, and the rear axle are all on the same center line, the chain has about a quarter to a half inch of free play. Because as it approaches this point, it gets tighter. This is its tightest. And then once it goes past that point, it'll continue to loosen up. And we can see that as it goes back, tighter, and then it gets loose again. The next part of our tech tip that we want to point out is maintaining your spoke tension. A uh, new motorcycle with spoke wheels are going to break in and they're going to loosen up. The nipple will loosen up in the rim and the head of the spoke will also loosen up in the hub. Once they break in, if you keep them tight, you'll have a relatively bulletproof wheel. Unfortunately, if that becomes neglected and you let it go over time, eventually you'll we'll have a complete failure of the wheel. The next thing we're going to talk about is tire pressure. Often overlooked, one of the easiest things that we can do is maintain our tire pressure. Uh, check the manufacturer's recommendation for the proper specification, but make sure you double check your front and your rear tire pressure as often as you can. The next aspect of your periodic and preventative maintenance that we're going to talk about is installing your front wheel. Seems simple enough, but this is one of the most common things that will cause symptoms of a harsh or stiff feeling front end. Our ultimate goal once we're finished installing the front wheel is to make sure that both forks still remain parallel so that they're centered on the axle. The forks not being parallel is what will actually cause them to bind. And as you can see here, they have the forks pinched in a little bit and how much effort it takes to actually get them to move. And once they bottom out, it takes a considerable amount of effort to get them to come back. So naturally that would have a dramatic effect on the performance of your suspension. Now we're ready to reinstall the front wheel. One thing I like to do before I remove the wheel is give the brake caliper a little bit of a squeeze. That pushes the pads apart so we've got a little bit of a bigger gap to put the brake rotor through. The next step will be to torque the axle clamp pinch bolts on the left fork leg. Our final step is to make sure that the right fork leg axle pinch clamps are loose and that the right fork leg can float freely on the axle like this. Now I like to bounce off the steering stop make the front end vibrate a little bit, pull it out, and push it in, do that a couple times and it should fall back into the exact same spot. It doesn't have to be flush with the end of the fork leg, the fork lug does not have to be making contact with the wheel spacer, it just needs to be happy with where it lands. Now that the right fork leg is parallel with the left fork leg and centered on the axle, it's time to tighten the pinch clamp bolts. Now that we're done installing our front wheel, we want to finish up that task by making sure we pump up the front brakes. Another real simple thing, a pet peeve of mine finding a wheel without a valve stem cap. Make sure we keep all the dirt and debris out of there from contaminating the valve core and possibly depressing that and losing some of your air. Next, service your throttle. You fall over and get these things packed in the mud until they get full of dirt and then they start getting gritty and they don't return very smooth. So if your throttle operation is anything less than this, Make sure you service that. So another often looked area are sprocket bolts. These tend to come loose if they're not maintained properly. As you can imagine, if this bolt starts to walk its way out, they'll start sawing their way through the swing arm, and they'll also start to destroy your hub. So make sure you keep those bolts tight. And last but not least, keep an eye on your body fasteners. If you're concerned about the body panels or the bolts coming loose, use the manufacturer's torque specification with a non-permanent locking agent and make sure your body panels don't fall off. And thank you for watching this presentation. Hopefully you were able to take something away from this and you'll come back and visit us for more.